shack with Glendora, a show for living right. A chat with Glendora makes your day so bright. Words of inspiration, jokes to make you smile. Come relax and chat with Glendora for a while. Yes. Hi, everybody. Grace and peace unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Hi, Amy. Hi. It's Memorial Day, folks. And I want to tell you the people, the bodies that I am remembering. My mother, my daddy, Franklin, my husband, Franklin's mummy, Franklin's daddy, and dot-com cat. And Amy has the one she's remembering, too. Amy gave us some, some new jokes. What are they, Amy, please? A uh, girl noisy in church. The little girl was noisy in church. And the mother whispered something into her ear. And the girl sat right up straight and didn't budge the rest of the service. And so somebody asked us, what did you... The mother whispered something into the little girl's ear. And the girl just sat right up straight and didn't budge the rest of the service. And somebody came up afterwards and asked the mother, What did you say to your girl? What did you whisper in her ear? She said, the mother said, I told her, if you make a ruckus, the priest is going to forget his sermon where he was and start it all over again. <laughs> uh, if he would help me mail my packages to the TV stations, my TV programs. This was back in the days when we had VHS. And he was so agreeable, and he was doing it. And he was in his shirt sleeves, and it's in January. Why, it's way, way down, like 20 degrees. And uh, I commented on it. And he says... Uh, just a second, he said, uh, I believe in the Second Amendment. And I said, well, what does that mean? He says, I have a right to bear arms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else, honey? Uh, number three is money talks. These are very old jokes, but they're kind of good folks. Uh a man says, money talks, and another man says, yes, and mine is saying goodbye. <laughs> um, cross a stream? Amy, what do you get when you cross a stream and a brook? What do you get when you cross a stream and a book and a brook? A larger body of water? <laughs> no. You get wet feet, honey. Oh, huh. Who does art? The little boy was saying his prayers. And he said, Our Father, who does art in heaven, Harold is his name. <laughs> we are going to do for you now today, on Memorial Day, the final version of the speech that Glendora has been asked to give before the Alliance for Community Media. Five, four, three, two. Hi, folks. How are you? My name is Glendora, and I am 95 years old, and I have been doing public access television for 53 years. We are currently on program number 14,230. Uh, we have the Glendora Public Access Television Network, of 500 municipalities across America 
and 72 TV stations. The chat with Glendora is on 72 TV stations. Boston, Quincy, Springfield, Pittsfield, Manhattan, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Chicago, Portland, Oregon, San Francisco, San Jose, San Diego, San Antonio, Los Alamos, and 14 more stations in New York State, and 14 more stations in the Connecticut. And the famous author was asked, what do you consider your greatest work of fiction? And he said, my income tax form. Harry said, I don't want to go to school today. He said to his mother, I don't want to go to school today. The kids don't like me, the teachers don't like me, and even the custodian has it in for me. His mother said, you are going to school today. You have much to learn, you have much to offer, and besides, you're 45 years old in the principal. <laughs> Computers are in the Bible. Eve said to Adam, do you want an apple too? The little old man and the little old lady were summoned to court because she stole a can of peaches. The judge says, how many peaches in the can? She said, six. The judge says, you are hereby sentenced to six days in jail, one day for each peach. And the little old man said, well, can I say something? And the judge said, be brief. And the little old man said, she also stole a can of peas. Now, along about, on or about 1995, uh, Glendor was exposing the questionable behavior of the supervisor of Nassau County, Long Island. That night, uh, she got a call from Cablevision, the cable company, there, and they said, we're taking your show off the TV. Um, tonight, as of now. And I said, well, isn't Cablevision afraid of lawsuits? Oh, yes, we're, we're always afraid of being sued. So the next day, folks, I went to the law library, the nearest law library, and I looked up how to write a complaint to court. And this was to the Supreme Court, County of Westchester, State of New York. And I found out how people write complaints, and I looked up the law, and there wasn't any law on it. Well, there, was, there were rules. I looked up the law for the State of New York, and the next day I called the Federal Communications Commission. And back in those days, the FCC was a whole lot smarter than it is now. And the man said this, and what I'm going to tell you, and then that was all. And I told him what happened. And he said, United States Code 13, 531E, and he said goodbye. Well, that was it, it's plain as anything. No cable operator can exercise editorial control over public access television. Thank you, Google. Stop. So, it was in the court for a long time. And then the decision came out, and listen to this decision. It said, 
point of has a statutory right to be on TV and must be returned to TV. Look, honey, I'm not going to be around much. This body's not going to be around much longer, but this spirit's going to be here forever. I am going to be there, and I am going to be prompting you. Take care of public access TV. It's in your hands. Take care of it. There are only two forms of free speech left. One is our dear, favorite, all-time sidewalk free speech. The other one is public access TV. And in 1985, I think it was, Congress did call us a public access forum. Excuse me. Congress did call us a electronic soapbox. Let me go over that again. Congress called us an electronic soapbox. There you have it. We have the utmost and we will deserve the greatest protection. And just a couple more things I'm going to leave you with. Never lie, steal a sheep. Never. Never lie, steal a sheep. And go vegan. May the grace of God be with you and everybody you love. Amen. Amy, you know, well, first of all, let's tell people that this is a chat with Glendora. Uh, this particular segment is called Soul to Soul. Our souls are only one soul, I tell you. And uh, this is Memorial Day, May the 29th. 2023 A.D., Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. And this is program number 14,000. Am I right, Amy? Is it 220 or 230? The last one we did was 229, so Thanks, this one honey. will be 230. Thank you, dear friend. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, Amy, we had a Bible passage that was very good. It was a uh, the New Testament, the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 5, Sermon on the Mount, uh, verse 15. Let your light shine before people and do your good works so that they can glorify your Father in heaven. Got it, folks? Not so they can glorify us. That's not the idea. It's to glorify your heaven and earth. Your heaven and your your father in heaven, this grand universe. And then what was the uh, it was a hymn, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Whispering hope. Thanks, Amy. Hmm? Was wait. Let me see if I can get the key. You know, I sing like a prisoner behind eight bars, looking for the key. <laughs> Do, re, mi, fa, so, so, whispering, whispering hope, oh, how well come thy voices, making our hearts in their sorrow rejoice, wait for the darkness to something, wait for the tempest to pass, hope for the sunshine tomorrow after the shower is gone. Whispering, whispering hope, oh how well come thy voice is making our hearts in their sorrow rejoice 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 and our word amy you know what this word has your name in it the definition of this word and the word is aim 
is this fits very well. Aim, and this is Amy. <laughs> a name is the direction of endeavors to the accomplishment of a goal. And you know what our goals are? When all is said and done, the only thing that really matters is how did you treat others. When all is said and done, the only thing that matters is how did you treat others. And the one, and what are the other two, Amy? We want ourselves and everybody we know what? To, to be the best they can be. Yeah. And what's the third one, honey? Is it possible to overcome sin and sickness with prayer and faith? We say yes, don't we, Amy? Yes. Yes, we say yes. Is it possible to overcome sickness and death with prayer and faith? Well, that's good. What else is on our list to tell the folks? Um, so, Events, right? Yeah, salute an employee. I'll salute you, Amy. <laughs> and I'll salute uh, April Jacobs. April Jacobs stayed with me last year up until August, and then she went away to college. And like a good puppy dog, I lay down at the end of the driveway and waited for her to come back. Nine months she came back today, and she is so capable. You just don't know how capable she is. The way she keeps this ship sailing, oh, she is so good. And she came back today. What's the next bulletin, hon? Salute a TV station. Hmm. I'm going to salute Paul Mateau, San Diego, California. The station is run so brilliantly and generously by the County of San Diego, Department of Education. Public access was stolen away from us by AT&T in the California legislature. They stole your free speech. They stole it. But the county of San Diego put us back on the TV. What else, Amy? Um, Memorial Day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I told you about that. And we're remembering your people, too, aren't we, Amy? Yeah. Plants outdoors. Oh, yeah, we put up Memorial Day. We've been waiting all winter. We put out the coleus for the summer. And Amy, you know the other two plants? Yeah. Well, April and I named them. You want to hear what their names are? Sure. Arthur and Archie. <laughs> That's cute. And when, what else, hon? Um, consummate cleanup. What, dear? Uh, cleanup. Oh, the cleanup. Uh, first we come in and put on rice to cook for the animals. And then because the first Monday in the month we soak the feet. Folks, soak your feet, will you? Oh, it's so good for your feet to be so... And they work so hard. And then we feed the squirrel. And then we feed the birds. And we went through the uh, window desk, Amy, for an hour and a half. Every little piece. We checked, and you will be so pleased that it is trim and tidy, a place for everything and everything in its place. And then we did the electronics, hard-working bench, and then we did the bed area, and then we uh, went through the bedroom, a place for everything and everything in its place, the bathroom and the shower, and Amy, we swept the uh, outside home. And... April went to the garage and what, with her telephone and went through the garage and told me everything that was there. And we, you know that coffee set that you couldn't get it get to, honey? Yeah. Remember, it was locked in by the 1980 Lincoln? Yeah. She got in, and she put it out on the uh, curb. Nice. In case it's, it's a good one and somebody can use it. Nice. Now, I've got to ask you this, Amy. What would you call that? Would you call that a daily cleanup, a daily housework? What would you call it? Some people would call it a garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call it
I guess I'm going to call it. This little clock pulse tells the temperature inside, and my temperature is 78 degrees, and it's always exact. Do you ever thank the Lord for the temperature that we have? Any great difference in temperature, and then we're gone, it's, you know how critical it is? Our range of temperature. Amy, what are we going to call it? All right, think about that, folks. What's next, dear? Work up to date. Yep, work is up to date. Thanks to Amy. Amy is here every day on time. Every day, maybe a lot of times a little early. And she leaves here punctually at 7 o'clock. You can depend upon Amy. <laughs> and for the first time in over a year, she missed a day. And it was because she had something wrong with your back, right? Yeah. But she came in on a day off and made it up. Right, Amy? Yeah. Uh, what else on the list? Uh, rescued four more cats. Yes, our friend Madeline, who rescued uh, eight cats, remember? Well, she rescued four more. And one of the cats she rescued was a mother kitty. They had six babies, and they are adorable. They are irresistible. Hi. Hi. Hello. Vicky. Hi. Hey, Vicky. Would you pull up a chair behind my shoulder here? Sure. Oh, my gosh. It looks so clean in here. Hi. This is Vicky. I know. So clean and organized. I know. Phil always, like, oh vacuums the crap out of your out oh. of the floor and everything. Mm -hmm. Girl. Oh, I'm so mm -hmm. happy to I see you. I have coffee you. breath. Sorry. <laughs> I just had an iced coffee on the way. <laughs> Uh, right. Pull up a chair? Yeah, pull up a chair. There's a chair over there. Oh, and Amy, how many minutes have we gone there? Uh, we're at 10 minutes and 17 seconds on this video. <laughs> Is that the seconds? And the first one was 10 minutes, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, Vicky, you guys are a dream in team. the last six minutes, bring me up to date, honey. Is there anything going on with you and Emma Woolen? Oh, I was just there on Friday filming something. Oh, you did? Yeah, so I'm not teaching, but they've been bringing me in to film their different events. Oh, oh thank you, dear world. Yeah, so they have an, um, a very impressive art program, so music, dance, um, you know, visual arts, and they had an artist day what on Friday, and I filmed all of the performances. You did? Yeah. You know she's saying video, she really means video. Video, uh, yes, I recorded. Uh, what is so impressive <laughs> about it, dear? Just the level of their their skill level. Oh. And their dedication to mastering the instrument or the dance is just. They're I well mean, versed, are they? Well honey? versed, yes. Prof and proficient. Huh? Very proficient. Yeah. Yes. And the you know the violin players. I mean, they sound like professional, world-class musicians to me. This is so, Emma Willard, which is yeah. described to the folks at home what Emma Willard is. It is an all-girls high school, and it's a boarding school, and the, but they also have day students. And it is, I think, the oldest all-girls school in the country. Oh, it may be. It must yes. be. Because She's written up in the World Book Encyclopedia, Emma Willard. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then some, you know, famous people have gone there, like Jane Fonda, other... Jane Fonda? Yeah, so I think she's the most famous person. Hey, Google, there. what is Emma Willard? According to Wikipedia, Emma Hart Willard was an American female education activist who dedicated her life to education. She worked in several schools and founded the first school for women's higher education, the Troy Female Seminary in Troy, New York. Do you want to hear about some of her books or learn more about her bio? Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> hey, Google! Yes! Emma Willard is the author of 36 books. Here are the first three. A Plan for Improving Female Education, History of the United States, or Republic of America, and An Address to the Public, particularly to the members of the Legislature of New York, Proposing a plan for improving female education. Do you want to hear more about her bio? Oh, yes. Don't you? Yes. 
Yes. Got it. Emma Willard was born on February 23, 1787 in Berlin and died on April 15, 1870. Oh, that's Berlin, New York there, isn't it? That wouldn't be Berlin, Germany. Sorry, I can't show you maps. I don't know. I don't have a screen. <laughs> okay, okay, Google. Um, oh, my gosh. Tell me more about Emma Willard. Sorry, I don't know about that. Okay. Well, I guess I messed it up. She's Google's angry with us. She got confused. Now, oh. now the next thing I wanted to know, Vicky, is the uh, Albany Medical School, the Department mm -hmm. of Anatomical Donations. Uh, have you done anything with them? I will in August. In August. And what will that be? That will be their convocation? You know, yes, they, they it's have their a, memorial service where they read all of the um, the anatomical donors' names and they invite their family members. You know, I've heard of something better than that. The what? Westchester Medical School, uh, Vicki, when I went, you know, Franklin's body went there. And uh, they invited us to a convocation. And okay. the medical students, Vicki, uh, would give thanks to the members of the family of the donors. Oh, yeah. And uh, like for Franklin, you know, they they said to Franklin in so many words how much they appreciated the education. And then uh, somebody else uh, played a, uh, the piano because that was their oh. talent. And another, oh, medical, nice. and another medical student wrote a poem, oh, a sonnet. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, Amy, I mean, uh, yeah, well, Amy and Victoria, they <laughs> had the most delicious reception. Oh, you did tell me that. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah, right. You yeah. understand, I think we have just time to tell the folks that uh, Vicki is an entrepreneur uh, she likes to make documentaries about successful women in the business world. Is that right? Well, I started out doing, yes, yeah, successful women in public access. And so artists and and public access activists. And Amy, how is your documentary career coming along? How mine is? Yeah. Oh, you said Amy. I was going to say Amy has become a documentarian. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Um, <clears throat> I finished the film about m the midwife and her fa and the family she was caring for, and it got into two film festivals. And what was that about, dear? That is about a woman who had a uh, a rough prenatal diagnosis of her baby. They said he was going to have a, a he had a heart defect, and it's about like her journey of have, giving birth to him, and he wound up living when they thought he was going to die and his name's Joey so what it's a, a documentary yeah it's a documentary about you know him being born they thought he was going to pass away but he didn't and he's 10 years old and that's at a film festival yeah it got into two so far I'm waiting to hear back from others there's one in Rehoboth Beach Delaware and the other one in Toronto yeah and, uh, women's documentary film festivals so I've been spending a lot of time trying to get like a little, a bunch of screenings set up of that film. Oh, of course. Yeah. And remember, it's a good thing. If the world wants it to happen, Vicki, it will happen. It will. If yes. the world doesn't, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So just relax. We've all got to say goodbye in a hurry. Amy, oh, you're yeah. first. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Vicki. Goodbye, everyone. I'll see you when I'm um, editing. <laughs> Grace and peace, everybody, to everybody you love. Amen. Amen.